Hey guys, so today I'm going to show you how to create a working uh, cannon in Roblox Studio. So you can get a cannon off of Toolbox. Uh, I just grabbed a free model. If you want to make your own cannon, then go ahead. Uh, first thing I want to do is actually create a starting point. So I'm going to create a new part. And I'm just going to put it in wherever I want the projectile to be fired from. So I want it to be fired from inside the cannon. And there we go. That should be good. I'm going to make sure it's anchored and just make it transparent. I'm going to call this part uh, start. And you can, I think it's better if we put this inside of the Canon model. There we go. So we well, should probably create a script inside of here, uh, but that's after we create our direction or like our ending point. So I'm gonna create just a duplicate of that part that we just created. I'm gonna call this end. You can change this position to wherever you want it to sh uh, fire at. I'll just leave it right there. So now we want to go into the Canon model and then we want to create a script. So oops, let's start off with creating some variables. Local script equals, oh wait, local canon equals script.parent. Um, and then local position, position one equals uh, canon.start.position. And then we want the second position. So local position two equals canon dot uh, what do we call it end so end dot position and then we want the direction which is just position two minus the position one um, so now that we have that we want to create a duration variable so how long it takes for the cannonball to actually uh, get from point A to point B. And we'll create a cannonball in a, in a little bit after we finish this script. So duration, the formula I used for this is math.log. I did 1.001 plus direction.magnitude. And then I multiplied that by 0.01. You can use whatever you want you want. Maybe you can set this just to like two. So like it'll take two seconds to get it from here to here. Um, what this this does though is it creates a different duration for depending on how long or depending on how far this point is from point A. So like if I moved this closer, the duration time would be uh, less than it would be for this, if that makes sense. So like, that's what this formula does, pretty much. Anyways, we want to create a force variable, and this is what is actually going to create the the curve and the path because we don't want it to just shoot straight. You you could do that, but it doesn't look as good. So I'm going to create a force value uh, variable. It's going to be equal to the direction divided by the duration. Uh, plus a vector 3 value that we're going to do 0 because we don't want it to move on the x-axis but we do want it to change the y-axis we want to take into account the gravity so game.workspace.gravity times the duration uh, times 0.5 and then we don't want the z value to change so now that we have that what we can do is actually create the clone of the projectile. Uh, so local clone is equal to uh, game dot replicated storage dot uh, cannon ball and clone that. So let's go ahead and create the cannon ball. I'm gonna create a sphere. Let's set this to one point or let's do two two two. I'll make it neon just because I think it looks better. 
Then I'll set it to, let's do black because it's, it's a cannonball. And let's do can collide off. And then I'll call it cannonball. Now you can leave it like that, but I do want to add a trail to it just because I think it looks nicer with the trail. So I'm going to add a trail and then two attachments. I'll call one of them attachment zero and then the other one attachment one. And then I want to actually move the attachments. So let's move this to the side of it and then this one to the other side. Then we want the trail to connect these two attachments and also enable face camera. That's pretty important. Um, and so let's do attachment zero, connect to that. And this connects to that. So now we have a trail, but I want to tr change the trail, how it looks a little bit. I'll change the color to black because the cannonball is black. Light emission, let's change that to one. I'm not sure if that, oh, okay, we don't want that then. There we go. Um, and then the transparency, we can change the, the starting point to zero, the ending point to one. So it'll kind of like fade away then I'll make the lifetime like 0.5. You can change all of this however you want, but I think this looks fine for now. Let's move cannonball into the replicated storage, or actually let's do server storage because uh, I think it's better for this. Let's get rid of that. That's from something else, but anyways, now we have our cannonball clone. So let's do clone dot position. Oh, sorry, let's change this to server storage because we moved it back there. So cloned out position, we want to set this to the starting position, which is position one. And clone uh, dot parent, we want that to be poor space. And now I'm going to add a force onto the, the clone. And so we're going to use apply impulse. And then we're going to do force times clone dot assembly mass. So we're taking into account how heavy the object is. Um, and then we're gonna do clone set network owner to nil. So that'll kind of prevent any lag that occurs. Uh, otherwise it'll, it'll create some kind of like stutter when it clones the part and tries to move it, which we don't want. Now, we could just leave it like this, um, but, yeah, well, first of all, we want this to loop. So let's do while true, or while wait, let's do two seconds. So every two seconds, it'll create the cannonball. And then we just move all of this code inside of here. Or you could do a function. So like look function uh, shoot and then and, and then just do that. So that works as well. Um, so the next thing I want to do, this is optional, I guess, but I'll do it anyways, because I know some of you might want to know how to do this, but we want to make it so that whenever the cannonball hits something, it'll do damage to that part. Um, I'll also have like a little effect, so like it'll it'll kind of like explode, kind of, whenever it hits something. You don't have to do that, but I'll do it for this tutorial. So to do that, we we do clone to size times equals a vector three value two two two. So that pretty much just means it'll get doubled in size. Then we want to set the anchor to true, so that it doesn't move whenever it gets hit. And then I'm gonna create some variables. So ts stands for twin service so game get service twin service and then ti that's twin info uh, and i'm gonna do let's make it 0.5 seconds enum dot easing style dot linear you can change that but i like doing linear or exponential could also work then direction dot out and then goal, we want it to change the transparency over time. 
uh, there we go. And then we're gonna create the tween. So local tween is ts create. We're gonna do clone and then ti and then goal. Then we want to play the tween and test dot wait. Let's do 0.5 because that's how long the tween lasts. And then, so whenever the cannonball hits something, we want it to get destroyed, of course. So cannonball destroy, or actually, a better way to do this would be uh, game dot debris add item clone after half a second. So let's just move that up here to stay organized. And now whenever it hits something, if you want it to actually like do damage, let's do if hit the parent fight for child humanoid, then hit dot parent fight for child humanoid dot health minus equals let's just make it do 50 damage you can change that to whatever you you want so that should be good um you you could also add a, a cooldown to this um actually i don't think it's necessary for this we'll just do yeah there, it sh that should be fine so i think that's it actually for the script so now if I just press run, it should create some cannonballs. Oh, we got an error. Let's see. Where's our error? I tend to call a nil value. Um, I guess the function just isn't working for some reason. That's rather strange. That's fine. I'll just do like I normally do. There we go. So now let's press run. Or maybe it was an error inside. Oh, there we go. So the reason it's doing this is because it's hitting the cannon. So the way to fix that is to check if hit dot, if hit is descendant of a cannon. We already created a cannon variable. If it is, a descendant of cannon then we want to return end so if it hits the cannon then it won't do anything and there we go we have a working cannon and it has a like a curved projectile path but yeah that's pretty much it for the tutorial if you did like it please leave a like and subscribe and yeah thank you for watching